Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I thought I'd do something a little bit different. I'm just going to give you all the S tier quotes for Macbeth so that you maximize your chances of acing your GCSEs. So let's get straight into it. This video is going to include a lot of quotes that you haven't really considered that are going to elevate your exam results and make sure that you actually have something different to say. If you don't know who I am, my name's Adam and I've been teaching English for over a decade. I've helped thousands of students pass their GCSEs, not just pass, but as I said, excel and achieve their full potential. So with that all said, let's crack on and get into the first quote. All the perfumes of Arabia will not sweeten this little hand. It's Lady Macbeth that says this quote. And the reason that this quote is so great is because you can talk about several different language devices in this, and you can also link it to several themes. Obviously, you can talk about how it presents Lady Macbeth, and it has some good links into context. So let's start with the language techniques. For this one, you've got hyperbole, sensory imagery, and metaphors. So firstly, the hyperbole of the fact she's saying that all the perfumes in Arabia couldn't sweeten her hand. Obviously, that's not true, but it's to emphasize the levels of guilt which is one of the other major themes that you can look at in this. It's also then sensory imagery because you can imagine the smell of blood and the smell of perfume and the idea that the smell of blood is so strong that it can't get through the smell of perfume. So this then links to the theme of consequences or also links to the fact that this is a tragic play, right? This is the tragedy or the fall arc of Lady Macbeth, the fact that she's chosen to make these terrible decisions with her husband and that has cost her conscience and uh, the Jacobeans would have believed cost her soul. This then links very deeply into the context of the time. You've got the Jacobean people and they were led by James the first, of course. And James the first was a Puritan king. He was the one that came up with the King James version of the Bible even. So very religious and all of this idea of blood is being used as a symbol for sin and the sense that Lady Macbeth is going to be punished. And it links to James the First's book because he wrote a book called Demonology, which warned his people of the dangers of siding with the supernatural forces, witchcraft, demons. The book was called Demonology. The second quote that I'd like to talk to you about today, which is again S tier, because this list is all going to be S tier quotes, is from Duncan. And Duncan says, there's no art to find the mind's construction in the face. He says this in Act 1, Scene 4. And the reason that this quote is so important is because it comes up with a very deep irony. He's literally saying, having executed the Thane of Cawdor, that there's no way of telling what's going on in someone's mind by looking at their face. And he then goes on to uh, compliment Macbeth who he's making the new Thane of Cawdor. So it's ironic that he's like not trusting one person and saying how you can't trust anyone and then saying how he's going to trust Macbeth. It's dramatic irony because you can talk about how as the audience, we know that Macbeth is also going to betray Duncan. And at this point, he's thinking about how he might betray Duncan. And it also links to uh, a very important theme called appearance versus reality. So you can talk about the betrayal, you can talk about the deception, but you can also talk about appearance versus reality, because that's exactly what Duncan is saying really here. Yeah. Now, in terms of the deep context for this, you can talk about how King Duncan, by saying this, is also saying something quite painful in England's history. This is at the time, literally just one or two years after Guy Fawkes had tried to kill James the first in what was called the gunpowder plot at time of recording we've just recently had the 5th of November and in England there's the classic tradition of fireworks night remember the 5th of November and that's actually the reason we blow up the fireworks is mocking Guy Fawkes because he failed to blow up King James the first in his gunpowder plot so there's some good context there for that quote another one that I think is less commonly talked about is going to be from Malcolm and he says, let grief convert to anger, blunt not the heart, enrage it. This is in Act 4, Scene 3. 
And the reason that this quote is so important is because Macduff has just found out that his wife and kids have been savagely murdered by Macbeth. So he's feeling terrible. And Malcolm has just recently decided that he's going to come back to Scotland with an army of 10,000 Englishmen from his uncle Seward. And now Macduff is also going to guide him and be a kind of like a mentor. Because Malcolm's pretty young. He's probably about the same age as you watching this video. He's got a teenager, maybe in his early 20s at the latest. And he's now being thrust into the position of being the rightful king of England. And that actually then links to some of the context because you can talk about how Malcolm has the divine right of kings and also the right of primogeniture. And so we see in this quote that he is going into his role as king by encouraging one of his subjects and one of his thanes, which is Macduff. It also links to the very important redemption arc of both Malcolm and Macduff towards the end of the play. The reason why those two characters become so important in Act 4 and Act 5 is because they're loyal to Scotland, but they also understand that someone has to take Macbeth down. He is a tyrant, he is destroying Scotland, the chain of being is broken as a result of him, and so they're the ones that step up to the challenge. And one of the pivotal moments in the play is when Macbeth goes totally off the rails and kills an innocent woman and her children in some weird attempts to get some revenge on Macduff just because Macduff hasn't been listening to him and doing what Macbeth wants. If you've got this far with me in the video, I'm really happy to see you're still here. Please give this a big thumbs up, liking, sharing, subscribing, add a little comment down below of your favorite Macbeth quote, or ask me about other S tier quotes. And if you write a comment, I promise I'll give you a response. Okay. So the next one I was going to give you is fair is foul and foul is fair. But the truth is you've probably heard comments about that quote a million times already. So I'm actually going to go with a different one from the witches, which is when the witches say, by the pricking of my thumbs, something wicked this way comes. And this is in act four, scene one, you have what's called the trochaic meter, which is dum de dum de dum. It almost sounds like war drums, the trochaic meter within the line. But in this one, there is also a very important dehumanizing. Macbeth is now being uh, seen by the witches as being more wicked and more evil even than they are, okay? So they have achieved their corruption of him. They've managed to take him from being brave Macbeth. That was his epithet in Act 1, Scene 2, right? And now they're looking at him and saying, wow, something really wicked is coming this way now. And of course, in that scene, Macbeth goes on to literally say, even till destruction sicken, tell me what I've asked you. That could even be another S tier quote, even till destruction sicken, because Macbeth is willing to do anything that he has to in order to achieve the next prophecies and to work out how he can try and maintain his power. It links also to the themes of the supernatural, the theme of corruption, the idea that they have managed to push Macbeth to this point where he is now just fully evil. That then of course links really deeply into context. You can talk about James the first's book, Demonology. You can talk about Jacobean paranoia about witches and witchcraft and their fear of the supernatural powers and of demons and Satan and all of that. So there's tons of context for that one as well. So the last S tier quote that I'm going to mention is from Macbeth and he says, upon my head they've put a fruitless crown. The reason why this quote is so undervalued in my opinion is because the metaphor goes very deep. He's talking about how he has the crown so he's the king now after killing Duncan, right? But he doesn't have any children so he has no line to pass his power down to. He has no son, he has no daughter. And then after saying that he has a fruitless crown, in the next line, he says he has a barren scepter in his grip. Now, the reason why these two together are so important is they link to the themes of corruption and ambition. And there's a deep irony here because Macbeth has literally killed a man to become the king. And yet he now has a barren scepter 
the imagery of that suggests that he's not able to have children. We don't know why that is. It's never told to us, but we get a strong sense that it's maybe God's damnation of him because earlier on when he just killed Duncan, he talked about how he couldn't say amen and the word amen stuck in his throat. So we get the idea that he's under God's judgment and that then links us into the context because we can talk about how James I would have warned his subjects about the evil influence of witches, witchcraft, supernatural demons, all that stuff, right? He would have warned them about the perils of trying to commit regicide, ending the king's life. And this is a really strong message to the Jacobean audience that if you mess with the divine right of kings, even if you're unhappy with James the first, if you commit regicide, then it's going to have not just dire consequences for your soul, but also maybe physical consequences while you're here on earth. And so that's why I would round out the list with that quote. If you're with me here at the end of the video, I just want to thank you especially. You're one of the major reasons I made this channel in the first place. I can tell that you really want to do the best you can in your exams. So I'm just going to give you a couple of bonuses here since you stuck to the end. So this is just my little quick fire round of some of the other really important quotes that you should be considering that I would consider S tier quotes. So we've got vaulting ambition, which overleaps itself and falls on the other. That is Macbeth comparing himself to a horse that doesn't have a rider to guide him. Lady Macbeth, when she says, come you spirits that tend on mortal thoughts, unsex me here. She's not only denying her femininity here, which is lots of stuff to talk about, but she's also calling upon the unholy spirit of the demonic to guide her, which the Jacobeans would have been really upset about at that time. Um, All hail Macbeth, hail to thee, Thane of Glams, hail to thee, Thane of Cordor, hail to thee that shall be king hereafter. The reason why that's important is at the end of the play, Macduff and the Scottish people hail Malcolm as king three times. So there are threes throughout the whole play. And so that is a really important three. And it's almost like this is the evil three that tempts Macbeth into corruption. And then there's the good three that brings Malcolm in to being the king. That's another quote when I think it is Seward that says, Sir, enter the castle, talking to Malcolm. That's another S tier quote because symbolically, as Malcolm enters Dunsinane Castle, he is coming back to restore the chain of being, the right of primogeniture, the divine right of kings, all the stuff that Macbeth took away with his regicide. Macduff was from his mother's womb untimely ripped. That's a really important quote because that ends the uh, deceptive prophecies that the witches fed to Macbeth where he thought that he was going to get away with being king and keeping the corrupt power forever. This castle hath a pleasant seat. The air nimbly and sweetly recommends itself unto our gentle senses. This is Duncan. It's again irony. And it's a reminder that, that Macbeth had so many blessings. He was Thane of Glams. He was Thane of Cawdor. He had the favour of King Duncan. Everyone in Scotland thought that he was a legend, especially after defeating two different armies in battle. And yet he gave away all of that because of his hamartia, his fatal flaw, which is hubris or AKA pride. I hope that was really helpful for you. If that was helpful, then please do like and share and subscribe. Add a comment down below. I will get back to you. <laughs> this is like a channel that I'm really hoping to nurture and grow. And if this is the start of your Macbeth revision journey, or you're just trying to add a bit more knowledge to Macbeth, then check out the video on the screen now, which is going to go over my Macbeth ultimate study guide. See you in the next one.